The Stark Tower of Osaka, Japan has recently suffered a break-in. Fortunately, the war machine is on the case. With Friday backing him up, on loan from Tony, James Rhodes begins his investigation. Rhodey isn't sure what he's doing here, but Stark contacts him and explains that he couldn't go himself as he's in the middle of something very important. As far as both men can tell, there is nothing in this building that would justify Madame Mask going through all the trouble of stealing, nor would there be any reason for the mysterious ninjas Tony fought earlier to show up. Rhodey offers to check out some contacts in the city to see if he can find anything else. Tony is grateful, but he wants to get back to his work. James realizes Tony is with somebody, and comments that it's stuff like this that makes everybody hate Stark. Tony turns his attention back to Amara, who is visiting and curious about this conversation. Stark explains how he was talking to Rhodey, his best superhero buddy of them all. With the day now free, the two agree to go get some breakfast. There, Tony doesn't want to talk about his work, as it is too frustrating, and instead Amara decides to talk about her efforts to cure Alzheimer's using magnetic resonance. The genius couple happily gets into the merits of this treatment, when suddenly, their meal is interrupted by Victor Von Doom. Tony is understandably upset to see his super secret best friend here, but Victor brushes off Stark's usual concerns. They need to talk. Meanwhile, over in Japan, Brody bribes his way into a club, promising the bouncer not to cause any trouble. A woman named Yukio cautiously greets the war machine, and James has to explain that he's here alone. He tells her how he needs to learn about the tech-based ninjas, and Yukio reluctantly agrees to point out the right person, as long as he doesn't chase the man in the club. She points out a man dancing with two women, and Rhodes is astounded at this person's size, asking if he's a mutant or an inhuman. Yukio replies that these days, she's just stopped asking. Amara wants to know what Doom wants, and Tony replies that these days, he's just stopped asking. Victor explains that he's changed his ways and wants to prove it to Stark, in spite of the fact that Tony's Iron Man armor has two repulsor beams tracked right on him. Pointing out he has proven he can easily ward off these attacks, Victor is unafraid, and simply asks if he has seen any otherworldly activity since their fight with Madame Mask. Stark hasn't, but he still isn't happy with Doom being here. The man could save the world from Galactus, Thanos, and ATM fees, and it still wouldn't make up for all the things the man has done as a villain. Doom looks at his companion and simply retorts that of course it would, and of course it would change things. Victor decides it's best for him to leave, saying he was just trying to check in and make sure everything was okay after that last encounter. Superheroes are notoriously bad for follow-up. Tony promises the next time they meet, things will get violent, but Victor again ignores such threats. He wishes Amara a good day and leaves, and even though Tony is apologetic to her, the woman doesn't care, and is instead fascinated at the encounter. Meanwhile, the man and his dates leave the club, only for Rhodey to grab the car and airlift it to a nearby rooftop. The man is outraged and shoots at his captor, but the war machine armor easily repels the bullets. Rhodey begins his interrogation, when suddenly, the woman shied the war machine. This sexist American didn't even consider that they might have been the real threat. Shame on him. Rhodey replies that in his defense, he was given bad intel, which is too bad. The women attack. Hello and welcome to Comic Island. My name is Arden, and this is my recap and review of Invincible Iron Man number 6. So when we were last with Iron Man, I mentioned how I wasn't sure whether or not I was going to continue covering this comic. Well, that changed pretty quickly as you guys made it very clear that you wanted more of these, and I can't say I blame you. This comic is always fun to do, so it wasn't too hard to justify covering this story. And this issue marks the very beginning of content leading up to Civil War 2, so this issue and the series on the whole feels like it's more than worth covering going forward. And yes, following the first story arc of this comic, which I really liked, things have more or less stayed on track. The art style has changed as we have a new artist named Mike Diodato, but I still enjoy the comic style. That being said, I need to see the man's drawings a little bit more, particularly when it comes to action scenes before I make any real judgement about his work. Still, what I have seen is promising, and art is always particularly subjective anyway, so who am I to judge? All the same, this is a pretty quiet comic, mostly focusing on a few conversations and set up for Tomi's new status, as well as the indication of what is to expect of the new chapter in this story. I still like the comic, it's clean fun, and man, 
If this is the new status quo for Iron Man, with Amara as his love interest, Mary Jane and Friday as his support staff, and Victor as his reluctant ally slash frenemy, I'm pretty sold on this. If Doom is really trying to be a better person and wants to work with Tony, that's awesome. It's been so fun thus far and he makes for a great foil to Tony. I really like how they work together and it's a very interesting dynamic. I really want to see more of this development and thoroughly enjoy the entire premise for this new direction with Doctor Doom. Interestingly, Mary Jane didn't appear in this issue at all, but I think it's because Bendis seems to be pacing himself with these characters, using them in his story as he sees fit rather than forcing them into every single issue. For example, this is the first time we've seen Amara in a couple of issues, and I do like her as a character. Her relationship seems to be continuing a Tony Stark off panel, so it kind of works when we just sort of check in on them. I'm sure we'll get more of MJ and Amara and everyone else pretty soon. But what I'm not sure about is what this has to do with Civil War 2. I couldn't really detect any little hints of that event in this issue, but maybe they're building up towards these things. To be honest, I don't really mind. The comic's good enough on its own, it doesn't really have to get into all this event nonsense so quickly. Anyhow, it was a good comic, a good story, and one I do recommend. You should check this issue out for yourself, and let me know what you think in the comments section below. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and keep reading comics.